Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Welcome to the 9.1 Mystery Monk Arena Guide. You're going to learn everything you're going to need to know to play Mystery Monk in 9.1. And I'll come up with an RBG guide probably in a week or two. There's a bunch of different talent changes and stuff that I'm using. Uh, but with that said, let's jump right into it. So something I do want to note, all the timestamps are in the description. You should be able to see the chapters. So if you want to skip ahead, feel free. But I'm going to start with races. We're just going to go through it from the start straight to the end. So here we, you know, you choose between Alliance and Horde. And in my opinion, there's really, o there's only two options. If, if you're going to go Horde, you're going to play Orc. Uh, Hardiness is a really good stun reduction on you. It's better than Sefus. It stacks with Sefus, which is a legendary, So, which I'll talk about later. So Orc is just the best, you know, M Mistweavers tend to die in stuns. So Orc being able to do stuns is just really nice. And then if you're Alliance, you want to be human. That those are really the only two options you have. Uh, human is really good because you have every man for himself, or I think they renamed it. I don't really remember the, the name for it, but you have every man for himself, which lets you get out of stuns, which allows you to use Relentless Trinket. So um, there's a trade-off there. You get to play Relentless. It doesn't stack with like any damage reductions, or it, Relentless doesn't stack with Orc, so you wouldn't play it. But as human, because you can get out of stuns, you can play that Relentless Trinket. So if you're Alliance, go human. If you're Orc, go Horde. If you're Horde, go Orc. There's really, unfortunately, there's just no other options when it comes to races. So let's just say you log in and you're level 60. The first thing you're probably gonna wanna do is you're probably gonna wanna get some gear. Uh, so for stats on gear, you want verse mastery. App, app, prioritize versatility. You definitely want PC gear with mastery on it. Pretty much all my gear has verse mastery. If you're just going for straight PVP gear, verse haste is also okay. So you kinda wanna aim for, I don't have enough haste. I think you wanna aim for about 10% haste just because soothing mist GCD is like really, really long. It, it feels long at least so. It kind of reduces that like gcd um, but you definitely want verse mastery and then if there's any pvp pieces that don't have verse mastery i think shoulders yeah ver shoulders don't have verse mastery uh go for verse haste um i think there's a ring socket yeah verse haste for ring and same with boots i'm pretty sure it's the same going into the new season so verse mastery prioritize on your gear if there's no verse mastery go for verse haste um then when you make when you're enchanting and jamming your gear again you want full versatility so when you farm out the um the gem sockets with the domination gear however they're doing it you don't have to but it's probably good just to get that extra you know versatility uh, you want a gem for versatile jewel cluster which is just 16 percent versatility i have it in all the sockets that you can get it you can also put it on your legendaries so if you have cloud of focus on your wrist which i'll talk about later you can also put a socket on that and you also want that to be versatility your ring enchants should be for versatility no surprise versatility and your weapon enchant i found to be good as celestial guidance i found that to be probably the best one i think uh, i think there's a cloak enchant yeah 30 stamina and then you could if you want to you can gem your i think you can enchant your gloves with agility so also really quickly as far as trinkets go as orc i've always played sinful gladiators medallion i've never played adept i've never played relentless and i always go sinful gladiators emblem i know that they just nerfed this but i think it's still the best it just works really well with life cocoon and like fortifying brew um if you're alliance and you're human you probably play relentless trinket just because again you have that every man for himself to get out of stuns and then the relentless is just really nice because it reduces cc on you those are gems, gear, uh, stats, and um, enchants. So that's what you should probably do as soon as you get some gear, as soon as you get to level 60. You have your race, you have your gear. Now let's talk about talents. And we'll talk about honor talent or regular talents first, and then we'll talk about PvP talents. Now, I'm just gonna say I do not change from Mistrap. Mistrap is the best in tier in the first tier. Uh, increase in Valping Mist healing and the, and the um, healing bonus from it, it's just, so it's really crucial to your healing rotation. So Mistrap, uh, Cheat Torpedo for tier two is basically what I run in 90% of matchups. The only time I run Tiger's Lust is versus Survival Hunters because they have Tracker's Net that you can't dispel. Um, and that, that's also how they set up traps. So Survival Hunters, Frost Mages, and just Mages in general, uh, they have the uh, Frost Nova, which is just really annoying. You don't want to waste a dispel on Frost Nova, and then you don't have dispel for Polymorph. So Tiger's Lust is really good versus Mages. Uh, Death Knights, because they have Chains of Ice, which is really annoying. Windwalkers as well. So any any of those classes, I tend to play Tiger's Lust versus anything else. It's Sheet Torpedo. The mobility for it is too good. Push in for CC. 
and get out of there. So cheat torpedo is what I go. In the third tier, I run manatee every game, 100% of the time. I know that there. I've heard people talk about life cycles and it works kind of well with Cloud of Focus. I am not a fan of it. I like manatee. I like having the control over my mana rather than hoping that, you know, I do vivify into enveloping mist. I, I'm not a fan of it. So I just go with manatee. In the fourth tier, Ring of Peace, pretty much every game, I get this question a lot, Ring of Peace for Song of Chi-Gi. In threes, I never run, run Song of Chi-Gi. In three v threes, never. In twos, I will versus teams that can't punish me for running it. So if I'm playing against a caster, you know, like a boomy with a one minute kick, then yes, I'll play Song of Chi-Gi. Shadow Priest, yeah, I'll play Song of Chi-Gi. I'll even play it versus Demon Hunters because they tend to overextend when they try to kill me and I can use it on them. But if I'm playing against a Windwalker, like a warrior, a mage, if you push in, you get, get, get triple polyed. Anything that can punish you pushing in and getting a song, or if you need the extra help from Ring of Peace, I'll play Ring of Peace. So hopefully that clears things up. I like Song of Chi-Gi. I wish it was just a little bit faster cast time, but Ring of Peace in threes is I play that every single game. In the fifth tier, I believe this is, uh, Healing Elixir, Diffuse Magic, Damp, and Harm. I really don't switch out of Diffuse uh, Healing Elixir unless I'm playing against, obviously, Double Caster. So if I'm playing against Shadow Priest, like Affliction Warlock, Shadow Priest, Ellie Shaman, um, Shadow Priest, Boomy, anything that has, you know, a bunch of dots I can reverse, I will play Diffuse Magic. RMP, I'll also play against, you know, Fire Mages, because Diffuse Magic lines up really well with the Combustion. Also, Diffuse Magic will reverse mind games and it just it's just a free dispel for that mind games you don't have to waste a global because diffuse magic is off the gcd so really good to know in the sixth tier one one two three four five six tier a gh servant statue every game that's pretty much it um unless you're playing against a walking dead team that you know 100 is training you from the start of the game to the end you could try gg but state jade servant statue is way too much healing to give up so every single game and then in the last tier, Focus Thunder every game as well. I have never played Up Rolling or Rising Mist in Arena. They're not good. So Focus, uh, Focus Thunder gives you two charges of your Thunder Focus T, which is Thunder Focus T is like the bread and butter of your rotation. So fo uh, Focus Thunder is just the best choice in that tier. Now in 9.1, Mist Reaver's got some quite a few changes in their PvP talents. They got new ones and they got some revamps. So I'm gonna go over them and try, kind of tell you what scenarios I play them in. So I'll just talk about the changes pretty much really quickly. Refreshing Breeze got changed from increasing your healing by uh, Vivify ceiling by 20% and refreshing Essence Font to uh, basically increase the healing of your Expel Harm by a good amount. Let me use a tome right here and see what we got. So you could see now uh, I'm gonna get stacks of Refreshing Breeze. Every time Soothing Mist heals, this will go up, increases the healing of Soothing, of Expel Harm, and dispels an extra uh, debuff. So you could see my Expel Harm hit for, healed for about 13K. That's because I was using it myself. It would probably heal for like 5K, plus Gust of Mist, which would be like 7K. It's not a huge heal. It's, I'm really, un it's really underwhelming. You use it in like one each situation. Dematerialize, you dematerialize into mist, and then you reduce damage taken by 30%, but then it gets kind of like chopped off by 10% each second you're stunned. I have not used dematerialize once. I'm really sad about it. Thunder Thunderous Focus T gives you like two knockbacks and it gives you a freedom, which is really cool. And then the biggest one is eminence. So this allows you to port while stunned. If I'm if I'm playing into anything with a stun, a Hodge a from a Pally, Leg Sweep from a Windwalker, Stormbolt from a Warrior, I'm playing Eminence every single time. Uh, Hunters and Rogues especially. Uh, RMP and Jungle, they rely on that stun to get a trap and a Pally on you. I'm playing Eminence every time. And then I'm playing Chrysalis as well most of the time. It's It did get nerfed this patch, which kind of sucks, but still Life Cocoon is our best cooldown and reduces the cooldown on it. So that leaves us with a third one. And this is normally my setup versus like melee teams with stuns. So if I think they're, you know, they're, it's just like a normal melee team that has some stuns, maybe some setup. And then I'll probably play Grapple Weapon. If it's like a warrior team or a DK team, I'll play Grapple or Demon Hunter, I'll play Grapple. This is my setup versus comps like that. Now, if I'm playing into something with uh, maybe a caster on it, I will probably play Cataract Magic. Now, Cataract Magic also got changed. I forgot to mention, uh, it used to be it increased the healing of Renewing Mist by 135%. It no longer does that. Every time you dispel a debuff on your target, it increases, it get, puts a buff on them, a 10% buff, and it stacks up to three times. So if you dispel um, three buffs, they get us three stacks. 
and that's 30% extra healing. This lasts for 10 seconds. The buff is on them and not you. So, or whoever you dispel. It could be on you if you dispel debuffs on yourself, but it, it's on whoever you dispel. I use Counteract Magic. I'm kind of a fan of it. In RBGs, in Arena, it's okay. It's kind of hard to keep up. Um, now, if there's Affliction, now let's just say, instead of just a normal caster, it's a Shadow Priest or Affliction Warlock, or maybe an LA Shaman. Actually, any caster, I would play Peace Weaver. Now, Peace Weaver is a new talent we got. Um, where Revival's cooldown is reduced by 50% and it makes you immune to all magical damage and harmful effects for two seconds, which is crazy. Like, you don't have Affliction Warlocks, you could just dispel everything without getting stunned. Shadow Priest, you could dispel their Vampiric Touch and not get feared. Ellie Shaman got a new knock up and deals damage when you dispel Flame Shock, you don't get knocked back or take damage. So it's just, it's just really, really really strong lines up with um every other mind games so peace weaver is really really good against let's just say i'm queuing it to boomy warrior i would play something like this just because you know shadow priest kind of find it hard they only have a storm bolt stun um and then chrysalis peace weaver you could even drop chrysalis if you really wanted to but i kind of like it and yeah that's pretty much my go-to now if i'm playing against double caster i would probably play peace weaver and then i would probably drop chrysalis for zen focus if there's a range kick on the other team a warlock mage um, anything like that, I'll, pl I'll play Zen Focus T and, and Peace Weaver, and then let's just say we're playing as Boomy Affliction Warlock or Shadow Priest Affliction Warlock. Uh, you could you could play something like Healing Spheres. Oh, gotta use another Tome. You could use Healing Spheres too. So you have a lot of options, but those are kind of the scenarios where I play it. So here's just, just some s different scenarios to help you out with uh, with PvP talents, just talents in general. If I'm playing against a double melee team, let's just say it's I think. Demon Hunter Warrior is going to be really good. I would probably play Eminence just because stuns. I would play Grapple Weapon because of Warrior damage. And then I would play Chrysalis. That's what I would go. This stops damage from the Warrior or Demon Hunter. This would stop any setups on you so or swaps to you, which is really good. And then Chrysalis is just a good cooldown. And then I wouldn't change anything over here. Now let's just say I'm queuing it to Caster Melee, which is, uh, let's just say, Warrior Boomy, which I've seen quite often. I would play... Peace Weaver, just because it's really good. Disarm for the the warrior, and then I would play probably Zen Focus T, just because it's really strong versus Boomies. You could delay their go. If you don't want to go Peace Weaver, you can also go Chrysalis. Now, there is one niche scenario, but I'll talk about it after this, but versus Double Caster, let's just say Affliction Warlock Shadow Priest, which we will probably see. Um, I would play Peace Weaver. I would play Orbs 100%. Affliction Warlock, Shadow Priest, you want to play Orbs. And then I would play probably Zen Focus T. Yeah, this is the setup I was even doing next last patch minus Peace Weaver. Um, yeah, this is what I would go versus like Double Caster. Now, there is one niche scenario where you would play Refreshing Breeze. And that is versus Feral Druids. So in 9.1, Feral Druids got a Mortal Strike that reduces healing on their target. Their Mortar Strike comes from Infected Claws debuff, and that debuff is a disease. It stacks twice. So, basically what that means is versus Feral Druids, they're going to try to get that stack to get the healing reduction. Refreshing Breeze is really helpful for that. So, versus Ferals, I would probably play something like this. Probably, probably this versus Feral Druids. And what this allows you to do is when you see that the Feral Druid gets uh, Infected Claws on... Um, yeah, I think it's called Infected Claws on their target, you could just heal... And then use your expel harm and it dispels every debuff it just dis it dispels everything which includes their mortar strike so that's why i would use refreshing breeze versus feral druids i know a lot of people have been struggling versus feral druids i just keep i tell them this and they and then they're like wow i didn't realize that you could do that so it makes it a lot easier versus ferals they're really annoying right now but i would definitely say uh, refreshing breeze versus feral druids is pretty much mandatory just because they do so much damage and they have the healing reduction at this point, you should have gear, you should have your talents, you should have your honor talents, and now you want to craft a legendary. You want to do, you know, you want to do Torghast, you want to do the the callings or whatever in the mall, and now you want to get your legendaries. So, start off with the best legendary. I believe it's gonna be it's it is Cloud of Focus. Cloud of Focus is your best legendary. The reason you want to be Cloud of Focus is because when you heal with Enveloping Mist or Vivify, you're gonna gain a stack of it, and for each stack, it's gonna reduce the mana cost and increase the healing by 20% up to three stacks. So what that means is I can use uh, Vivify three times and that's gonna make my next Vivify or Enveloping Mist heal for 60% more, sorry, and that, or 
and their mana reduction is reduced by 60%. So that's why it's so huge. It helps with mana, helps with healing output. It's just overall uh, a really strong legendary. And now you don't it, the stacks don't break because again, the stacks break when you move and you stop channeling through the mist. They don't break when you use mana T or Zen Focus T. So it's just like by far the best legendary you can have. Now that is gonna give you, and I use that in 99 of my matchups. I use that in every two, in 99% of the twos games, 99% of my threes games. The only other legendary I change is Cephus. Uh, Cephus is really good for setup comps like RMP and jungle. When I see a, a salty rogue, or if I see a feral druid on the other team, nor I'm I'm going Cephus just because they have a lot of stuns and they're they're all setup based. So if you reduce the, the duration of their setup, it's just easier for your team to win. And I use that. I put that on my chest. I put the cloud of focus on my wrist. Uh, that's the best place to put them. Verse mastery for both. And yeah, those are the best. Those are the two legendaries I've been using. I've heard things about ancient teachings. It's I don't think it's that good because you have to push in and you'll die. Um, but yes, uh, definitely craft cloud of focus first and then go with Cephus. Something I do want to note, if you're playing human, Cephus does not stack with Relentless. So if you're playing human and you're using Relentless Trinket, just go Cloud of Focus. Um, again, Cephus does not stack with, with the Relentless Trinket, so you will not get any value out of, out of the Legendary. Now you got your gear, talents, you got your Legendaries, and now you probably have to choose a Covenant at this point. And this is a, a really hot topic for, especially Mistweavers, uh, because we, we aren't like other specs. We actually do have options, and I'll talk you through these options. But you pre you really have three options. You can go Necrolord, Kyrian, or Venthyr, um, and I'll talk you, talk you through what I think the best ones are and what you should do to switch between them. Experience tranquility. Yo, thank, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. I'm actually doing the guide right now uh, off stream. I'm not streaming right now. So thank you so much for the follow. All right, so here we have the soul binds and I'm gonna talk to you about what covenants. I'm gonna talk to you about the conduits and just everything about everything you need to know about covenants. So first off, I am Necrolord right now and I am Necrolord for one reason, actually two reasons really, but one of them got nerfed. So the main reason was this absorption shield right here oozes frictionless coating. Uh, when you get reduced, when you, your health gets reduced below 50% health, you get a shield for 15% of your health. This was nerfed in 9.1 from 15% to 7.5%, cut in half by 50%. And that's that's a, that's a huge blow. It is. That is one of the major reasons why you were Necrolord um, was because you got the shield and it helped your survivability. Uh, if you are Necrolord, I would still go it. It's the best option. You also get the potency conduit. And yeah, th that's just your go-to. Um, next up, we have the second potency conduit. I'd probably go with Bone Mirror Hops, really good. And I'll talk you through the conduits as well. I just kind of want to walk through and uh, kind of help you guys out with uh, what to choose. And then the second choice, the second reason why you were Necrolord was for ultimate form. And what this does is when you're channeling Fleshcraft, which is the ability you get, you're immune to CC and you regenerate 2% of your health every second you're channeling it. So. That's your, first, that's just good in general. And then in addition to this, if you fully channel, you gain three seconds of crowd control immunity and, uh, uh, a little, and you also regenerate 2% of your health. So I could show you this right now. I am Fleshcraft. Right now you're gonna see ultimate form. I'm immune to CC and healing. And then boom, I fully channeled it. I'm also immune to CC and healing. So it's just really good for healing and it's really good for avoiding crowd control. Um, really good versus mages for polys we're just good against everything if you see a stormbolt flying at you midair you can you can flesh craft it if you see a hex coming at you flesh craft it like it's just really good very very versatile and you just have a lot of ways to outplay the enemy um so those are the two main reasons why you would go necrolord these other two soul binds are terrible for pvp mostly for pve not worth going and you probably want to go nourishing chi here i would say you want to go here you get a finesse conduit you go here and so this would be your soul mind if you're necrolord now i'll talk about the conduits now um so i'll, I'll briefly i'll i'll talk about the conduits as well resplendent mist is your best potency conduit um it gives your Gustamus a chance to do 90% more healing at max rank, which is just crazy. Uh, and then your next endurance conduit, your, the best endurance conduit is fortifying ingredients. This gives you a shield when you use fortifying brew. You can see the shield right here, 11,000 shield. Just 
really, really solid. So that's your best endurance conduit. The next best potency conduit is Necrolord only. And I'll obviously give you options if you're not Necrolord, but Bone Marrow Hops is really, really good. It just gives your, your Bone Desperate a chance to do more healing. And then the next best potency conduit is Nourishing Chi, which after you life cocoon somebody, you get you get you keep that healing increase and it's also increased so it's just really good the next best endurance condo is harm denial just because if you're playing refreshing breeze you want the extra healing from expel harm and yeah those are the two best endurance conduits i don't think you there's any reason to go for a third endurance i think those are the best two and then finesse conduit i like lingering numbness you could also go swift transference those are my top two favorite ones i like i like either of those dizzying tumble is also an option when you use leg sweep it puts a debuff on them and then whoever was affected by it does less damage also really solid so i like the slow from lingering numbness if you don't need a slow let's just say you're playing with like i don't know a bunch of dks and windwalkers and you know warriors that have slows you don't need to go it you can go swift transference for more mobility or you can go dizzying tumble for more utility so completely up to you and this is what it would look like if you were necrolord now kyrian has popped up on the radar because their legendary is actually decent all the other covenant legendaries from mistweaver are really not that great and so kyrian gives you two, really two soul binds you can go for more healing with pelagos or more defensive play style with mechanicos but mechanicos has a really bad soulbind tree and i'll show you that in a second so if you're gonna go pelagos combat meditation gives you extra mastery when you use weapons of order which is crazy our mastery let me see if i have healing yeah this is my healing from i believe this is an rbg and this is this is my mastery this is our mastery gust of mist now this guy would buff your mastery when you use weapons of order and weapons of order is already a crazy cooldown so um it's pretty sick uh so again so we're splendid mist best potency conduit you come here and it doesn't really do much. It's really actually kind of good for RBGs. So whenever you kill somebody, it reduces the cooldown of Vile, which is nice. They don't really get much value out of it from, from Arena. But And then obviously your next, you know, in first Endurance Conduit is going to be Fortifying Ingredients. You're going to get a second second Potency Conduit. And I would go here, I would go Strike with Clarity. So if you're not Necrolord and you're Kirin, Strike with Clarity. This in re increases the duration of Weapons of Order and then also increases the mastery you get. It's so much mastery so much healing it, it's crazy so struggle clarity really good um and then i would go with again i would go with the endurance conduit and i would go with harm denial just because i think harm denial is really good so again you get two really good kind of like necrolord you get two really good endurance conduits and then you get two really good potency conduits and then you get go with um let's go let go of the past which just increases it reduces magic damage you take which is just good so and then again you get another potency condo and you're gonna go with nourishing tree and you it's essentially the same it's literally the same exact tree except different soulbind traits and then here you go path of the devoted because when you are after you leave cc you can't be reduced below 90 percent speed which is great for increasing mobility and then again you have a finesse conduit if you're a lingering numbness if you don't need a slow you can go for mobility with switch transference or you can go dizzying tumble completely up to you doesn't matter and then you have newfound what's it called resolve which it, it just increases your intellect and stamina for 15 seconds. So this guy is just really good for healing. RBGs for sure. Um, and casters is what I would probably play. And honestly, if you don't think you're going to die, I would also go Pelagos. He's just really good uh, in, in general. So you also have a second option with Kyrian, and that is Forge Light Mechanicos. His, he has really good soulbind traits, but his... But the path is awkward, and I'll show you. So you go bronze, call to action. You just summon a little fella. He does some damage. He's okay. He can help keep people in combat, though. And then you go for the potency conduit, of course. And you go with Resplendent Mist, always. And then Forge Light Filter is great. This makes it so your vial automatically procs when you drop below 35% health. It has a one-minute cooldown. Still really good, though, for when teams try to swap to you. And then you have a Finesse Conduit, which is kind of awkward because... You don't have an endurance conduit yet especially if you're low renown level so i would go again out I, I would go i'd like the slow but if you're not playing with slows and then i would go with the fall damage here because especially if you're rbg really good for you know times where you're gonna maybe jump off lm or something i don't know and then obviously endurance conduit you're gonna fortify ingredients and then here is where it gets a little bit awkward the best soul mine trait here is sparkling drift globe core which when you drop below 30% health, you stun nearby enemies around you. Now it is dispellable, but it is still really good. Um, it is 30% health, so it might not get procced for with in combination with this, but 
The problem is you have a second finesse conduit and that's just really, really awkward. Uh, you have to not go for a second potency conduit. Uh, Soul Steel Clamps is decent, but it was nerfed in PvP by 50%. Um, so you go here and then you do get another potency conduit and I would go Strike with Clarity here. And then you go, at, at here. This is the best one. You get a 16% shield, essentially. You get an 8% shield when you take physical damage. 8% shield when you take magic damage. So you go that. But then you get... It's a third finesse conduit. So it's like... It's decent. But you just... Instead of instead of a third... Well, instead of a second endurance conduit and a third potency conduit, you have three finesse conduits. You get three. So it, he is awkward. And then finally, you have the um, Effusive Anima Accelerator, which when you use Weapons of Order, it deals damage to people. And for every person that hits, it reduces the cooldown by 8 seconds up to 40 seconds. So basically, you have a minute 20 Weapons of Order in RBGs or Arena if you hit like 5 people. So really good. Uh, it's just an awkward tree. I would probably use this versus RMP. RMP. Teams that are going to... that like. I think this is probably the best choice for RMP. And then RBGs, this is definitely what you want to go because you have that reduced cooldown of eff Effusive Anima Accelerator. So, except I would just change up for RBGs. I'd probably go for like, not sparkling. I would go for this potency conduit for sure. So that's Kyrian, good options. And then the third option really, Venthyr is, is still kind of solid. They just buffed uh, Fallen Order, which is a really, really solid three minute cooldown. Uh, the only reason I swapped from Venthyr to Necrolord was because I kept dying, but Necrolord just got nerfed, and now we can port while stunned. So you need to keep that in mind. You can port while stunned now, so keep that in mind. Um, but I would say the best one is probably Najee or Draven. Again, you have options here. You would probably go Thrill Seeker. Again, you go you Potency Conduit, and you go down here. You get Door of Shadows. You go for Finesse Conduit, Lingering Numbness, boom. Fortifying ingredients, of course, and then you'd, you'd probably still go familiar predicaments. These other two are terrible, so you'd want the potency conduit. I would absolutely go imbued reflection for the extra healing with fallen order. Uh, familiar predicaments was nerfed from 20 per I think it was 25 percent, and it's cut in half in PvP to 15 percent. So, uh, this was nerfed, and then you get another potency conduit. So, I'd probably go with nourishing chi. And then I like the slow, but you could also go with the healing if you're playing with a warlock, you can go with the shield, but you want the obviously the extra endurance conduit so uh harm denial is really good so again this is a really good tree this gives you versatility 20 percent versatility uh i think on like a two minute cooldown or something like that i don't know what the cooldown to wrestler here is but very solid now she's really good it gives you more mobility gives you fear it's she's really good she just got nerfed and then draven also got nerfed but again still pretty good i mean you go for, you get you straight off you get an endurance conduit you go for grounding breath um you get the move as one, which is decent, but it's okay. And then you're going to go with Resplendent Mist, of course. You can go with either of these. I, I never repair my gear, so it's probably a good idea if I go that. And then obviously, you want the Potency Conduit. Hold Your Ground did get nerfed in PvP, so um, it's, it's still worth it to go because of the uh, Potency Conduit. You go Nourishing Chi here. And again, it's literally the same tree over and over again. Uh, Intimidating Tactics gives you a 50%. 50% faster, Dwarf Shadows is casted when you're below 50% health. And then you have any overhealing done, you will heal for an additional 15%. 15% overhealing over, over 6 seconds, which I think is decent. Uh, but you, I would really go for the second Endurance Conduit, because I think Harm Denial is actually really good. And then the Battlefield uh, Presence is okay. It just increases healing done and you reduce, reduce the damage you take. So overall, Venthyr is okay, um, but I think that uh, you're probably better off. Oh, you get a third endurance conduit oh then i would go here yeah i would definitely go here and go with the finesse and get something like this yeah there we go so yeah that's what that's what this tree would look like and i would say overall if i had to rank them i think either necrolord or kirin is the best um necrolord if you want more defense with fleshcraft uh kirin if you want more healing from pelagos and then venthyr is just more healing as well so up to you. You have more options with Kyrian. I kind of like Necrolord until I want to know how much healing Kevin is going to do. If he doesn't do that much healing, I'll probably go Kyrian. Now you have your talents, PvP talents, covenants, legendaries. Uh, before you step in the arena, let's talk about some macros. Let's talk about macros and what I think you're going to maybe need. Um, 
while queuing arena. Thankfully, Mistweaver doesn't have a lot of macros, which is nice, but I'll talk about some of the main ones. Uh, so the biggest one, you definitely want to stop casting macro. So this is a cancel. All the macros, by the way, are in the in the pastebin in the description below. So you don't need to copy them here. I mean, you don't need to pause the video. All in the, all in the description, all right there. I'll just talk about the macros I use. So this is a stop casting macro and a tiger palm macro. What it does is if I cast Soothing Mist, I stop channeling. And if I'm targeting somebody, I'll use tiger palm. That's that's it. Um, trying to comp, trying to make as much room for my action bars as possible. Uh, this is a tier five uh, macro. So what it does, if I change talents, it'll change on my action bar. I'm, just for the lazy ones out there, this is the same one, uh, except for it's tier four. So if I change Song of Chi Jane Ring Peace, it changes on my action bar. It doesn't really do much. This is a at cursor. Where's my at cursor? Right here. This is my at cursor um, Jade Tournament Statue macro. I also have a stop casting in it because you can actually juke people. With, uh, I've done it. You could. I've done it a lot. What you can do is I put stop casting in my Jade Tournament Statue, and if you're channeling and you press it, it'll stop casting and put a statue down. You could juke people with it. It's really nice. I am a fan. Um, this is probably not needed anymore. That's not needed. It's focus T. This is a pretty decent macro. It's kind of awkward though now because you can't press it. But this, what this will do is this will just use focus T and then Soothing Mist. But obviously you don't need to use that now because you could use it while channeling. So it's not really necessary. Disarm macros I would say are pretty important. So there's a few roads. You, you can use focus macros or random one, two, three macros. Um, I would suggest getting used to at least one of them. A lot of people just use focus macros. I am the type of person that uses um, arena one, two, three macros because I like being able to control who I want. I can disarm paralysis at a time. So I have arena one, two, three disarms. Um, you, you don't see them on my action bar because they're all hidden right here. So this, these are my grapple one, two, three macros. Um, arena one two three for paralysis. You can see right here. So I have paralysis one two three, disarm one two three, and then I also have tiger's lust one two, which is for my teammates. Um, that way I don't need to switch between targets. I kind of just, I just, you know, press it and I it uses it. Bone disc brew. This is actually pretty good for. This is an at cursor bone disc brew. So you can see. Uh, normally, uh, let me make sure I have it right here. Normally, bone disc brew has the cursor. Uh, this is just at cursor, so it's just wherever my cursor's at, it'll it'll throw it. So it also has the on use. I actually need to change. I need to use uh, Bloodthirsty. I think it's called Bloodthirsty, which is the orc racial. No, that is definitely not what it's called. What is it called? It is called Blood Fury. Oh my god, I was way off. Blood Fury. I got the blood right. So this is gonna have Blood Fury. Usually my my life cocoon macro had it, or my manatee, but um, I can't use that anymore. So. That's those macros. Let me see what else we got. Um, this this is just a Yulon uh, macro to make her big. That's it. Um, it's a toy. It makes her red. That's it. I mean, it uses big red ray gun, and it's kind of fun just for aesthetics. Um, let me try to see what else we got. Provoke macro. Let me. Uh, this is for inf if you queue into Destro Warlocks. Uh, this is a provoke infernal. So if the infernal you know, uh, drops from their ability. You can provoke it. It'll break CC on you, like repentance and stuff like that. Polymorphs, if they're playing with a mage. Uh, this is a orbs macro and orbs macro. And what this does, so this is a at cursor macro. So again, what that means is it'll just put an orb on the cursor. I'm not expecting to it right now, but I can show you real quick. Boom, boom. It'll put, it doesn't even matter. I could just put it anywhere uh, without having to deal with the macro or do, deal with the cursor. And then this is a really important one. This is an app player healing sphere macro. Now you cannot place a healing sphere directly under somebody, but you can put it underneath yourself. So what that means is if I have a, now if you're playing spheres, a little trick is to put a port down and you put an orb on top. And again, my I'm not gonna use my mouse at all. Um, I'm just going to use my macro and it puts a healing sphere on my on my player. You can use that for um, for orbs. You cannot use that for like teammates, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, I dispel one two three. So dispel one two three makes it really easy easy to dispel your teammates. Very very important. And then I'm trying to see talent another talents macro. Thunder focus is not too much. 
that is pretty much it for macros. I have, I do, oh, provoke macro again, provoke macro. What this does is this will taunt pets towards you. And this is really important uh, versus hunters. Just keep that in mind. Oh, I also have a life cocoon macro in here somewhere. Um, where's my life cocoon? Right here. This is my big life cocoon macro. It has a bunch of toys in it. and that, But really, it is important though, because this no mod target help no dead exists. You need this. So I, I'm surprised by how many people don't know about this macro. If you use Life Cocoon on a teammate that's mind controlled, it will Life Cocoon you. If you're in an RBG and you try to Life Cocoon someone that's dead, it'll Life Cocoon you. If, um, if for some reason it's bugged, if my Hunter feigns death, it'll Life Cocoon you. So what this does is this will not use Life Cocoon unless you're targeting somebody that isn't dead, exists, and is your is your teammate. So, and is your target. So. I'll show that right now. So this is my macro right here, my life cocoon macro. I'm not targeting anybody. I'm gonna press life cocoon. My life cocoon does not go off. Uh, my toys go off, sure. My life cocoon does not, does not go off. Now I'm gonna target somebody who is alive, my teammate, and is friendly. Boom, life cocoon goes off. So really, really helpful for RBGs in arena. I would highly recommend using it, Co copy and paste it. And then the only other things I use are scripts. So I run, I use about, I use three scripts. I use, um, script bottom which puts me on the bottom of my raid frames i use this is my ui script it's really just for max debuffs my focus frame um, spell q window world text and then increase my max zoom and then i have my mist one two three which changes the nameplates of arena enemies to from their name to arena one two three because again i use arena one two three macros and that is that pretty much does it for my macros. I'm pretty sure it is. Not, you could use a focus as well. I don't think I, where's my focus focus. Yeah. You focus paralysis as well. Uh, but that that's, I mean, I say that's pretty much it, but it is quite a decent amount. Um, oh, also something I would use slash use 13 and 14 for trinkets because this is number 13. This is number 14. And what it does is you could switch out your trinket and you, and you don't need to drag it onto your bar. So, you know, if I want to switch it up, let's say I'm doing RBGs, boom. It, my action bar automatically updates with whatever trinket I'm using. You just see it over and over again. So I would say it's just quality of life, really. And I would, um, I would, I would use those. But that that pretty much does it for all my macros that I use. And of course, I'll talk about add-ons as well. Add-ons are pretty important, but you don't—they're not necessary. I would say a few I would use. Uh, the biggest ones I would use for arena are S arena. So that's what shows the, you know, all of the important stuff when I'm playing against what they're casting trinkets racials and then on top of that diminish so those are the two big uh add-ons I would use uh my UI is basically this is just dominoes and this is details besides that I would say those are the most important things um as far as cooldowns and stuff omnibar is really good so um omnibar will I have quite a few but Omnibar tracks cooldowns. I have also have ones for dispel. If you want any of my UI files, all in the description below, free, all yours. Do whatever you want with them. I try to update them as much as I can. Uh, fly, bait, fly plate buffs is what shows my paralysis on people, and um, nameplate cooldowns is what shows their cooldowns underneath their nameplate. But those are the major ones. That's like five add-ons I use for pretty much every, all my characters. So add-ons don't need to be super complicated just anything that helps with information now i just want to talk about our cooldowns really quick i'm not going to talk about covenant cooldowns just because it can change but those are pretty important but for the monk cooldowns fortifying brews your big defensive you can't use this while stunned so you want to it, it's really hard you're gonna have to be a mind reader when it comes to this stuff but you're gonna want to use fortifying brew before you get swapped to if you feel like teams are gonna go you you're off stun dr uh, i would just use fortifying brew if you feel like teams are gonna swap to you um Touch of Death is a three minute cooldown, but hardly works half the time. You use it when someone's dropped below 15% health. Uh, Yulon, Yulon, she is, I complain about her, but she is actually decent. You want to pair her with Manatee, which is another cooldown. Uh, it's a talent that we talked about earlier. Reduce the mana cost of your spells by 50%. So what you want to do, Yulon's on the GCD. You want to Yulon Manatee, and we'll talk about rotation stuff, but the healing comes from Enveloping Breath. So, and that does not happen unless you use Enveloping Mist. So. You need to put enveloping mist up and she get that buff and she's okay she's pretty good you want to use that when i usually see use it i try to use it as early as i can because i it's i, you know, I have yulon and manatee right at the beginning of a match so that's usually my first pair of cooldowns i use and i use that whenever i see a major cooldown go out revival really good versus casters 
and just dispelling. Uh, if you're not playing against casters, let's just say you're playing against like mage teams or literally any any team that's not caster, you can just use it as a dispel or instant heal. Pretty solid. Uh, Life Cocoon is your in arena life cocoon is your cooldown that that's that's what your cooldown is um it absorbs healing and then also increases your heat your hot by 50 percent so that's your major cooldown that's where teams are trying to play around and hold it as long as you can uh essentially and that's pretty much it uh the, the the bread and butter when you don't have life cocoon or if you have it and you don't want to use it is thunder focus t and that it just helps enveloping mist instantly heals renewing mist durations increase vivify cost no mana and then rising sun kick cooldown is reduced by nine seconds so uh pretty solid um pretty solid spell our cooldowns are kind of lackluster they're literally all three minute cooldowns all of them so kind of sucks but uh still we can we can kind of work with them and kind of play around other teams you just have to trade really well as a mistweaver now, I would say the easiest part of Mistweaver is the rotation. It really isn't too many spells. It's just there are some interactions you want to know. And the biggest thing you want to know is Vivify. So what this does is it heals your target. You're gonna ch It's instant with Soothing Mist. It heals your target. But in addition to that, it'll heal everybody with Renewing Mist on them. So if you have Renewing Mist on yourself and you Vivify, it'll heal you and then also heal you a second time because you have Renewing Mist on you. If you have a teammate that has renewing mist on them and you're healing yourself your vivify will also heal your teammate with renewing mist on them so that is the most important thing that's why you see in the monk mondays and everything renewing mist renewing mist is the most important spell um to have on everybody and then vivify just helps with that healing so their healing rotation very simple it, it really is simple you want to keep renewing mist up on us as many people as possible. You want to keep Renewing Mist recharging at all times. Um, there, You'll see me in Arena sometimes using Renewing Mist when I, I don't even have charges because it's just that important. Once you get that going, it's just Vivify. That's it. Now, if you're running low, if your teammate is low on health, let's just say 50% health, Thunder Focus T, and what that does is it'll, it'll give Enveloping Mist an instant heal. So I'll just throw an Enveloping Mist out and I'll follow that up with the Vivify. You never really want to use double enveloping mist. It's just really not good. Um, so Thunder Focus is really important. I really only use the enveloping mist and vivify. At the start of an arena, sure, I'll use Thunder Focus T, Renewing Mist, Renewing Mist, just to keep the hots going. But as soon as my next Thunder Focus T is up, I am not using it on Renewing Mist ever again. If my teammate is low on health, I'll use enveloping mist. If my teammate is fine but needs some healing, I'll use on vivify. Because again, it makes vivify cost no mana. And this is also another interaction you want to you want to keep in mind is the interaction with clouded focus and thunder focus t so again uh what this does is every time you use uh enveloping mr vivify you gain a stack of it and it reduces the mana cost and increases their healing by 20 percent and the stacks up to three times so what that means is if you use this is i love this interaction by the way if you use thunder focus t vivify vivify you gain two stacks for free and you get to increase the healing and mana cost of your next enveloping mist by 40%. So it's huge. That's huge. So 90% of the time, what I'm going to use Thunder Focus, the rotation is just renewing mist. And if you have Thunder Focus, you're going to vivify, vivify into an enveloping mist. That is the rotation. That is really as complicated as it gets. Um, now, if someone is low on health, again, I will use my Thunder Focus T Enveloping Mist to get, it kind of sucks because you don't get the mana reduction from Cloud of Focus, uh, but it's just so good uh, for the instant healing. If I have Yulon, again, what I'll do is I'll Yulon Mana T and I will use my Enveloping Mist, Thunder Focus T Enveloping Mist. You usually, you know, cause you want to get the Enveloping Breath out and then, you know, use some Vivifies, get your Mist up. And you could take Essence Font off your bar. Don't ever use it. Uh, Bone Dust Brew, I use when I'm kicked. Because you could use it while kicked. It is shadow. It's not uh, your uh, soothing mist school. So if I get kicked, I'll use bone dust brew. And then as soon as I come out of a kick, I'll be able to heal with that bonus mastery. And that is pretty much the healing rotation. Um, Life cocoon, you want to save that as a last resort. Uh, it's really important to just use it. It's 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 your it's your one arena cooldown pretty much. And when you use it, I instantly put a renewing mist up because it increases hots again by fifty percent. So I'll put a renewing mist up, and then I'll try to get a velvet mist out on them. So that's pretty good. It, again, you increase the healing of your enveloping, um, enveloping mist because it's hot, and that that's really the rotation. If you're using your healing spheres, you want to put a healing sphere down. Put a healing sphere down but you don't want to waste your time you know you want to heal while you're putting uh, your, your orbs down so 
stuff like that. If you are using Refreshing Breeze, uh, let me see if I got a tome left. I do. If you're using Refreshing Breeze, what I'll do is I'll put Renewing Mist up um, and then I'll stack it up. And then if I see the Pharaoh put some dots out and the debuff up, I'll just use my Expel Harm for healing. Something to note, if you are Brewmaster, Expel Harm is actually decent um, with Bonus Brew. So if you're Brewmaster, did I say Brewmaster? If you're Necrolord and you have Bone Dust Brew, if you Bone Dust Brew yourself and Expel Harm, you literally, you just top yourself. It's actually incredible because you get double healing from your Expel Harm. You can see you get 7k, but then you Bone Dust Brew healing and then you get the Gust of Mist. It's literally a lay on hands um, if, if you can line it up and not get kicked. And I'm trying to think of healing rotation. If you don't, if you have Manatee with no Yulon, I would say use Manatee when you see cooldowns being used. Uh, it, it's Unless the other team isn't using cooldowns, there really isn't a bad time to use Manatee. If you see Avatar from the Warrior, Dark Soul from, a, you know, li literally any offensive cooldown and your team is starting to take damage, just Manatee. Just Manatee and just throw. I, what I do is I'll just Renewing Mist and Thunder Focus T and Velpy Mist people. It's 50% reduced healing or uh, mana, so it's just really good. In your healing rotation, you also want to do damage because monks have a passive called Mystic Touch. And what that does is when you deal damage to somebody, it increases physical damage dealt to that person by 5%. And that goes for your teammates as well, not only not just your damage. So with this turn up, up if you put if you use Crackling Jade Lightning, you put Mystic Touch up, you apply the debuff, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kicks, anything like that, any damage, Spinning Crane Kick, you see me in Arena use Spinning Crane Kick to get Mystic Touch on everybody after a leg sweep. Uh, that's what I, I use to put the debuff up. This only lasts, I believe, 15 seconds in Arena. So you want to constantly keep trying to put it up. If you can't get 100% uptime, it's fine. But the most important time you want to do it is if your warrior or you know whatever you're playing with is doing their burst rotation, you want to you want to make sure you just put a crack. You just want to crackle that target. Make sure you apply the debuff to them, and that way your team is doing essentially 5% more damage. And that is that is the healing rotation. I know I kept saying it over and over again. That is that is the healing rotation. It's just vivify and Velpy mist. Thunder Focus Team Renewing Mist. Those, that's your bread and butter. Throw in a Healing Sphere if you're using it. Um, Life Cocoon if you have to. Bone Dust if you get kicked. And Revival if you need to dispel something or you need to, you know, kind of recover. There's some spread healing. That's that's the healing rotation. Then 9.1, they also, they took away a lot of our passive healing. So mana management is crucial. You need to be able to manage your mana. And like I said before, Thunder Focus T, Double Vivify costs no mana. And Cloud of Focus also helps with this. But there are going to be situations where you're going to need to, you're going to need to, you know, get some mana. Uh, some neat tricks you can do. I usually go for a drink when I have Life Cocoon. Because if I'm going for a drink, my teammate is, you know, over here by the sphere. I could just, I could, I could drink real quick make a key mine for drinking and then i can just pop out life cocoon boom you know um it's just really handy you don't fall behind one trick you can do is revival does not put you in combat so what you can do is you can go for a drink here especially if your team is like kind of close you can go for a drink you could revival you could heal them and then keep going for a drink so again revival does not put you in combat very important to note and then it just comes down to timing um you want to go for a drink if you don't have life cocoon you want to go for a drink when your team is the aggressor so if the other team is running away let's just say you're playing i don't know tsg your warrior pops avatar your dk pops pillar frost the other team is trying to kite out the damage kind of deal with it you're going you, you're looking for a drink in that spot you're not the one that's uh under pressure or taking damage the other team is so that's when you're looking for a drink and then that's either going to force them to push out and overextend to get to you or just let you drink so that's when you're going to go for a drink again manatee is really important do not use yulon without manatee and use enveloping mist you will fall so far so far behind in mana um and then it really comes down to thunder focus team vivifies it costs no mana you also get stacks of cloud of focus really easily so that's that's pretty much what it comes down to you have your talents, legendaries, covenants. You know your healing rotation. You know when to go for a drink. Positioning in arena is, I, I said that, you know, the healing rotation from Mistweaver is easy. The hard part is positioning. It all comes down to positioning. Mistweaver gets punished very, very easily, very easily for being out of position or not using the cooldowns right. So what that means is if my team is by my statue, uh, you're not going anywhere. You, this is where you are. You are home right here. You're healing your statue. Uh, that that's it. You're you're right here. Um, now, 
Another important thing with the introdu introduction of Eminence. Let me go for another Tome again. Again, Eminence allows you to port while stunned. Now, this is very important because before Mistweaver was punished for bad ports, but now with Eminence, you're punished even more if you don't port if you don't have your port down in the right spot. Again. You're going to be using it versus pretty much anything with a stun and you want to make sure that port is los if you have a port here if you're playing against rmp and you have a port you didn't reset your port and they go for a cheap shot poly on you and you port that stun and you're in the middle of the map you're you're you just wasted your port and they could swap to you because now your port is still a 45 second cooldown um it's very important to have a good transcendent spot most of the time, 99% of the time, you want it right behind a pillar and you're going to be healing from far away. If they go for a cheap shot on you into a polymorph or a stun into a trap, you're porting behind the pillar. It's that simple. Um, the 1% of the time is when teams are training you. So this is a very cool little thing you can do is you could put your port in the middle of the map. And let's just say you're playing against Walking Dead. What you can do is you can it, you have them chase you behind the, the pillar port when they get to you and then roll across the map you're across the, and then you're across the map and they can't get to you there will be times where you need to push in and that is when you're going to push in for crowd control so let me show you what that is your basic crowd control spells are in cap and leg sweep that's your that's what you're going to be using to to cc and there's two things you can do with this cc the the most common one is you can in cap and then you can leg sweep so you leg sweep that you paralysis and then leg sweep because it keeps them in place the other combination you could do is you can leg sweep the DPS and then paralysis the healer. That is my favorite combination to do in arena and in, in, in just in general because it, it locks down the DPS and then puts the healer in crowd control. You did it all by yourself. And then the little niche CC you could use is ring of peace. So if you're playing as a team and you don't, you know, you don't, um, you don't need to use ring of peace you're you know it's casters they're really not going to kill you or train you down you could use ring of peace as an interrupt which is pretty neat you could also use it to force people out of position if they're hiding behind a pillar or if they're trying to just stay far away you could bring them closer to your team if you're for example in bfa a lot of the time and even now if a warlock uses dark soul and they're trying to run away you could ring a piece to the pillar and they can't kite away so really many uses for ring of peace but you're basically using uh ring of P uh paralysis and leg sweep to kind of lock down the other team and especially the other healer if i had to place monk in a tier i would say that resto druid right now in 9.1 is looking strong resto shaman is also looking pretty solid with the healing reduction and i think holy priest are the top three best healers right now mistweaver and i think holy pally are kind of tier two or three i think holy pally might be better than mistweaver i think mistweaver though is in a better spot I still think we're one of the worst healers, but we're in a better spot than what we were before, if that makes sense. Um, we definitely feel better with being able to port while stunned. And the comps you're gonna wanna run, pretty much anything double melee. Again, you're gonna have Mystic Touch to put on people, so you wanna take advantage of the 5% damage increase. TSG, which is Arms Warrior, DK, DH Warrior, um, DHDK, which is Hero Cleave, is really good. If you wanna play with a caster, I've played with, uh, I played Shadow Cleave, which is DK Warlock and yeah anything you want a, a, a turbo which is enhancement shaman um warrior and then my bread and butter what i've played a lot is thunder which is ellie shaman warrior i like that comp a lot i think it has a lot of potential i think it's hopefully we can get rank one with it this season it'd be kind of nice but yeah those are the main comps you want basically want to play with anything that can heal themselves and keep themselves alive while you're in crowd control uh that that's what a good comp is and that is pretty much it. I asked people in the stream if they wanted a long video or a bunch of short videos. They said a long video with a bunch of timestamps. So that's what I did. Hopefully this was helpful to anybody who watched. Hopefully Mistweaver is a little bit better and viable in 9.1. Uh, but that is pretty much it. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later.